As we close out 2017, strategists are out with their forecast for 2018. Here now is Eric Whitenis from J.P. Morgan Private Bank. All right, Eric, I think J.P. Morgan out with a 3,000 price target for the S&P 500. We remain optimistic as we head into 2018. I think optimism continues to pay. There's a lot of different things to point to in terms of reasons to potentially be concerned what's going to cause the next recession and things like that. Uh, but to us, there's a lot of reasons to remain front-footed in terms of your investment and your risk disposition. Global growth is genuinely, continuously synchronous. That's very powerful. This is a story that's about much more than just the United States. Earnings are the main driver here. That's incredibly important. This isn't a story of massive multiple expansion. And when we look around the world, we just don't see the types of imbalances that would create that next downturn. So we remain optimistic. You know, global quantitative easing stimulus in 2017 stood at $2 trillion. It's expected to go down to $1 trillion in 2018. How could that affect the markets? We know the markets love that stimulus. It's a fair point. If there is something that could potentially go wrong, uh, to me it is possibly inflation, surprising expectations to the upside, and forcing an increase in the pace of that withdrawal or the stimulus or that general withdrawal not going as smoothly as the post-crisis period has done. I mean, let's be honest here. The central bankers have got it pretty darn right in the post-crisis period, but as they have to gradually withdraw liquidity, haven't had a ton of examples of that in history, so we're going to need them to get it pretty darn right again. What sectors bring us to 3,000 in the S&P 500 next year? What do you make of the tech sector, financials, et cetera? We do still like tech. We think that the growth story there is fantastic. Disruption and AI are going to be themes that continue to play out in markets. That being said, Scott, this rotation at this point of the cycle, almost a decade into it at this point or getting into that ballpark, we're probably going to continue to see some degree of a rotation in the direction of sectors that will benefit from things like tax reform and also investments that offer a greater degree of value at this point in the cycle. So stay with the financials for 2018. Yes. Meanwhile, what about Bitcoin? I'm sure you're getting a lot of calls on that. Uh, futures trading debuted on the CBO not too long ago. It's starting again on the CME. What do you make of it? Fascinating phenomenon. Um, our disposition at this time is to invest in things where we determine their fundamental value, cash flows, organic growth. That's where we think it's best for our clients to invest in the long run. So is Bitcoin an investment in your view? Some would categorize it as an asset class. Some would categorize it as a new type of currency. We choose longer term, more proven asset classes where we can, again, model the cash flows, what's the fundamental value, and what's the prospect for growth over the long run. My hope is that we could see a degree of volatility return to broader capital markets at some point in 2018. You and I were talking about this earlier, Scott. The level of somewhat eerie state of complacency in markets I don't think is super healthy. So I'd love to see a 5-10% pullback sometime soon just to shake things up and remind market participants that a continual melt-up in markets isn't so much the norm. Yeah, remind investors that stocks can go down. Yes. <laughs> Eric Wachinis, thanks so much. Thanks a lot.